Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. So in this video here, we're going to take a look at some different Jupyter Notebook tricks. If you're not already familiar with these tricks, they will definitely help you out when you're developing your scripts in Jupyter Notebook. So we're going to see some nice tips and tricks in Jupyter Notebook. We're going to see how we can extend the cell, cell width in our Jupyter Notebook. Also how we can ex add extensions like we have in Google Chrome. We also have some different shell commands, magic commands and so on. But let's now jump into Jupyter Notebook and see how we can use them. So let's now jump into this Jupyter Notebook and see some tips and tricks. First of all, we're going to see how we can extend the cell width of our notebook. I'm just going to copy paste the command here and then we're just going to extend uh, the cell width so we can then work with a larger uh, and wider cell so we can call all the parameters in a function on the same line and so on um, instead of having these borders at the end. We can just set the width here equal to like 100% or 80% or whatever you prefer from ipython.core.display. We import display in HTML and then we're going to use that to extend the cell width. Here I'm just going to hit shift enter and we are going to run this cell we can now see that we don't have these borders at the end or like these gray borders um, at the end. So this is the way that you can extend the, um, the cells in your Jupyter Notebook. So this is actually like a really cool trick. Now we can have way more on each single line if you're passing in a lot of arguments to your functions. Then the next one is that we actually want to get like multiple cell outputs. We're going to set that here. And then I'm going to show an example. So this is the exact command, command that we're going to use. So we have this interactive shell from IPython core um, again. We're going to set this equal to all. We're going to run this block. And now we are actually able to output multiple cell outputs in, um, in our Jupyter Notebook. So here we can have A equals 2. We can have B equals uh, 4. And then we're basically just going to call A and B. And then we can see that we have multiple outputs when we run this. So now we both get two and four out as an output. If we didn't call this command beforehand, we will only be able to, to show one output. And here, if you wanted to print A as well, we will actually like have to type print before we actually like ran this command. So this is also one of the cool tricks in this Jupyter Notebook that we can use. And it's actually like really useful if you're doing a lot of calculations um, and you just want to like debug your code and print out multiple stuff in your outputs. The next one is that we can actually use shell commands as well. So if you're going to like pip install things inside of your Jupyter Notebook, we can also do that. We just have this one and then we have um, what we want to do. We want to pip install. So here we're just going to call pip install. Um, let's just pip install omcv python. Even though I already have it installed, we hit shift enter. So we can actually like run the exact same commands as we do in the command prompt or in the terminal. Here again, we can see that the requirements are already satisfied. I already have OMSV Python installed on my PC. We can also call ls here um, as well. We also get the magic commands, but here we can have ls, which basically just shows what we have in our folder. Again, we can call all of these different kind of like things um, or like these shell commands as we're doing in the terminal. We can also cd into stuff. So here we can cd into YOLO class. We can even see that I get these recommendations in my Jupyter Notebook. And this is because I'm using a notebook extension as I'm going to show you now. So this is actually like really cool because if you're not using this extension in Jupyter Notebook, you won't get any like suggestions at all, like code suggestions and so on. Autocomplete, uh, you will need to like write out everything for yourself. And that is actually like one of the um, disadvantages of using Jupyter Notebooks compared to uh, Visual Studio Code. We can pip install our Jupyter Contrib um, extensions. So I'm just going to copy paste it. We have this pip install Jupyter Contrib NB extensions. We hit shift enter here and now it's actually like going to pip install it. We actually need to go out again to our homepage and then up here at the top, you will probably need to uh, reload your page, but then you get these NB extensions up at the top. And then you can just go in and check off what are the different kind of like uh, extensions that you want. We can have like auto scroll, we can have co co uh, code folding, um, I also have like hide the header, notify, table of contents. So if you want to have, uh, if you have a, a, a very long notebook, you can actually like have a, um, a contents, table of contents over to the left. We can split cells and notebooks and all these around things. So it is really cool. We also have this code prettify so we can get more pretty code. We don't need to take care of like how the code structures and so on. So a lot of these extensions are already in Visual Studio but now we can also get them into uh, Jupyter Notebooks. 
If you just go into one of them, let's just go into the, the table of contents, then you will actually get some examples down at the bottom. You have different parameters that you can tune. Here we can see the example of the table of contents that it is going to create. We can specify different parameters for it. And this is the exact same thing as in all the other extensions that we have. We can also get the code uh, prettify. We can specify some different parameters for that. Um, let's just see here, we also have this hinderland. We can read like shortly what it's about. Enable code auto completion menu for every key press in a code cell instead of only enabling with tap. So we can use all these different kind of extensions. You can go through them, see what 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 do you act like prefer to have in your Jupyter notebook. You will probably not need like all of them. And these are the ones that I found the most useful. So let's just go back again and find another tip here that we're going to use. So we also have these magic commands that we can use. So again, we can run we can run magic commands. We can run like whole Python files, Jupyter notebooks inside of a single cell. We can also time our functions. We can time a single line. We can also time whole code blocks. So first of all here, I'll just make sure that I am in the correct directory. So we're going to call ls. We can actually just try to do it with the magic command here as well. We can see that we can do that. I have this test.py file that we're going to run. So I'm now I'm going to show you we can use this percentage mark and then we can actually like run Python code as well. So we just call run. We can both use uh, run Jupyter notebooks, but also Python files. So here we have tst.py. We can see we even get these um, suggestions up at the top. We can then hit enter, shift enter, and now we will run this Python file. It is basically just printing the version of OpenCV. We can also go in and use the time module, so the time it module and so on to time our functions. This is really useful in our Jupyter notebooks. So again, we have this percentage symbol. We now we just need to run time. We both have time, we have time it, we can use a single percentage symbol and we can also use uh, two percentages, which is for the whole cell. So if we just call percentage time, it will be for a single uh, line in our code cell. So here we're just going to run this. I'm just going to calculate the square root of a large number and then we can time that and see how it performs. So for i in range, and then we're just going to have a large number um, that we're going to time. So here we're just going to have a couple of zeros. I hit shift enter and then it will act like um, time the function. It will act like do multiple runs of it um, and get you an, an average. So here we can see the total time, 17.1 milliseconds. Um, we can see also the user here. So the wall time is 17.1 milliseconds. Now we can go down and see how we can do it for multi lines or the whole code cell. So we just, just have the double one. Again, we just use time. We can also use time it. But now we're just going to calculate the square root in the whole cell instead and see the difference. But again, this is just to show you that we can calculate uh, the time that it takes to execute a whole cell. But we can also take individual lines, time, in time individual lines. So let's say that you have a for loop or like uh, a couple of functions that you want to run inside of the same cell. Then you can act like time each of the individual functions in your Jupyter notebook. And this is a really useful tip. So here again, we're just going to have a for loop for i in range. And let's just copy paste it up here so we have the exact same number copy it and then we're going to paste and then we're basically just going to have our square root dot append again we can see we get these suggestions so now we have a list we hit dot and then we get all the different functions that we can use on our list in python we can both sort it reverse it remove clear but now we're going to append it and then we're basically just going to append the square root so i times i we're going to run this block of code and then it will like, like time the whole block. So now we can see that the wall time is 25.5 uh, milliseconds. It is a bit higher compared to the single line up here at the top, but that is probably because we're also calling this append function to our list. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. I hope these Jupyter Notebook tips and tricks will help you out in the future. This is really awesome for me because now we can get these suggestions. Instead of typing out like whole lines of code, um, you will make like errors. So often in Jupyter Notebooks, I'm misspelling um, the different kind of like functions uh, because it doesn't come up with suggestions. I'm misspelling uh, variables, classes, instances, and so on. And that is act like really cool that we can now use these extensions. So I'll link to one of the other tutorials I have on my channel up here or else I'll see you next week, guys. Bye for now.